Well, here we are, game seven. This is when this great game is at its best. It's been a long winding road for these two clubs to get to this point. Last night, it was certainly an emotional roller coaster like a great heavyweight fight. Two champions standing in the middle of the ring, going toe to toe, pounding on each other, and the Cardinals ended up on top on that freeze home run, winning it in 11. So now tonight, and the question has to be emotionally, how do these two teams come into this game? The Cardinals should roll in on an emotional high. And Tim McCarver, as I welcome you in, how did the Texas Rangers put that heartbreak so close two times last night behind them and try to win game seven? Well, there are a lot of ways to approach it, but I think the Rangers have to treat the early innings like the late innings of a tie game. I mean, press the issue, try and score her early. Try harder to score early so you can erase the memories of last night. And they'll be trying to do that against Chris Carpenter, the Cardinals ace, pitching on short rest. Meanwhile, it's Matt Harris and the young left-hander getting the ball for the Texas Rangers. And you can't control your pitches unless you can control your emotions. And Matt Harrison will try to do both tonight. We know you folks can't wait. You know what? Neither can we. Game seven tonight. Moments ago, the Cardinals took the field, let out there by their 36 year old right hander Chris Carpenter and tonight's opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser great times are waiting grab some buds Taco Bell starting lineup for Texas brought to you by Taco Bell think outside the bond Ian Kinsler first up then Elvis Andrews it's Josh Hamilton homered last night Hitting third, Michael Young, Adrian Beltre, Nelson Cruz, good to go. Mike Napoli, bat ankle and all ready. David Murphy is batting eighth, and Matt Harrison pitching and batting ninth. And here are these numbers from this postseason for Carpenter. Glad you're with us. On short rest. Ball one up and away. Carpenter who has eight total postseason wins for the Cardinals that's the most in franchise history albeit with more opportunity with more rounds he is 2 and 0 at home this year 6 and 0 in his career and pitching at home during the postseason first time he's done it however on short rest good start Kinsler with a base hit into left on a pitch that was up. And Ian Kinsler has been hot. He had a couple of hits last night, two RBIs, and he's on to start the night here in Game 7. Let's take a look at the scouting report. Increasingly more curveballs in Game 2 for Carpenter against the Rangers than in Game 1. Big game, well, of course. LaRusso said no pitch limit. That quieted the crowd, and so would some damage if the Rangers could do it. Here in the first inning tonight. There goes Kinsler. Now he comes back and he's trapped. Just like that, the Rangers lose Ian Kinsler on the bases. One out. A mini momentum shift. Andrew squaring around. Kinsler slips. For the second time in this series, Kinsler is picked up by Molina. Caught in between, but Molina wasn't. It goes down as a caught stealing. 2-3 with Pools on the tag, and now a ball down and away makes it 2-0 on Elvis Andrews. Now the 2-0 on the inside corner. Two and one. Home plate umpire is Jerry Lane. He is the crew chief. He worked the plate when Carpenter made the start in game one, and that was called strike one. Here's a 2-1. Ball three, three and one. The Rangers won game two, two to one, on great base running by both Kinsler and Andrews. Bad start on the bases tonight. See what Andrews can do with a 3-1 count. He takes a one-out walk. And now we give you the Cardinal defense. Little different look. 
In the outfield, Alan Craig is in left. Matt Holliday has been disabled. Skip Schumacher in center, Berkman in right. Freeze for Kyle Ryan. Terrio gets the start. Albert Pujols at first. Yadier Molina does the catching for Carpenter. We'll give you a bit of an injury update from Ken Rosenthal here in the top of the first if we get the chance. Here's Hamilton. Ball one outside. Joe, you and I were watching Josh Hamilton take batting practice. It was the best batting practice we have seen in the postseason by Hamilton. He was launching balls out of here. And his last swing, he won midway up the back end of the bleachers in right. He is late on that swing. 93 from Carpenter. Ball one. Here are some of the injuries. That nasty twisted ankle by Napoli. His left ankle then Holiday with the injured hand a finger. He has been put on the disabled list and then Cruz hurt his groin. The only guy that can't play here in game seven is Holiday. Runner goes and a base hit into right. It's past Pools and Elvis Andrews will cruise all the way around. It's an RBI double and the Rangers strike first. Aggressive on the bases starting the runner and Hamilton puts Texas on the scoreboard. Normally in a World Series when a team has a bad break like Ian Kinsler being picked off you stop running. It's only normal not Elvis Andres. He had 37 during the season off with the crack of the bat scoring easily and Hamilton the second base. Last night's gone right now for the Rangers. Fastball tails back high on Michael Young. Now runner at second, one out. Last night the Rangers got a run in the first and missed a chance for more. Young was a part of that when he struck out with runners at the corners for the first out. Now he lines one into right. Berkman on the move, won't get there. Going around third and coming to the plate is Hamilton. Young has delivered an RBI double, and it's 2-0 Texas. That ball up and in to Michael Young. He fists it down the right field line for another double by the Rangers. Third hit in this inning. In fact, Carpenter hasn't retired anyone. Molina did. Three hits and a walk. And a runner at second, one out, two nothing, Texas in the first. And a strike hits the inside corner to Beltre. Beltre's had a nice series and a productive postseason. That three homer game in the division series against the Tampa Bay Rays. He has hit two home runs in this World Series. Including one last night off the end of the bat strike two and one of those on a curveball from Chris Carpenter We talked about the curveball Chris Carpenter threw seven curveballs his first outing The last time he faced the Rangers he threw 25 curveballs out of 101 pitchers Here's an 0-2 a strikeout for round number two and with Nelson Cruz coming up, we'll go down to Ken Rosenthal for an update on the injuries from game six. Joe, Nelson Cruz did not receive any injection. He's going on World Series adrenaline with that groin. He hit several balls out in batting practice, and I asked him, how are you doing? After he was done, he said, did you see me? Now for the Cardinals, Matt Holliday out with a sprained right wrist. His replacement, Adrian Chambers, was in a TGI Fridays with his girlfriend ordering bacon and potato soup when he saw the news flash across the TV added to the World Series roster. So he is available and on the bench tonight. As a strike hits the outside part to Nelson Cruz from Carpenter. He saw the big ERA of over seven in the first inning for Carpenter. And then he's had the ability to settle down. After that he's given up two, a chance for more and that's ball one. How can Chambers be in a TGIF uh, Fridays when he should be in a J Bucks here in St. Louis? <laughs> oh, hey. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it clean. Runner at second, two out. Here comes a 1-1. 
That is a tester for Freeze to pick up the throw, and the inning is over. Bump the Texas Rangers trying to put last night out of their memory, get two in the first half inning here in game seven. Here is the Taco Bell starting lineup. Think outside the bond. The Cardinals have Ryan Terry on the leadoff spot for the first time this postseason. His first start since game three. He's about to walk in. Then Alan Craig, Albert Pujols, Lance Berkman, David Freeze, Yadier Molina, Rafael Percal is batting seventh. He's been the leadoff man. Schumacher is in center, and then pitching is Chris Carpenter batting ninth. And here are the numbers this postseason an ERA over five for the young left hander Matt Harrison. Tim will give the scouting report after Terrio does something, and nope, you're going to do it now. Yeah, okay. Well, it could be wild early. We can tell early. Double play is an ally. He led the majors in inducing double plays and never a start like this and that's stating the obvious. Here's a pitch up and away to Ryan Terrio. We'll watch and see if he is high early and a little bit wild. Terrio is two for 18 since the division series when he hit well against the Phillies and the counts one and one. Cardinals have hit just 245 in this World Series. They came alive late last night. Here's a 1 1. Up and away, ball two. Cardinal hitting coach Mark McGuire and everybody for Texas available in their bullpen except Colby Lewis. So CJ Wilson, their number one starter, is available if needed. Terrio grounds to Kinsler, who led off with a base hit for Texas, and there have the first one out. And now we look at the Texas defense Murphy in left Hamilton in center Nelson Cruz is in right around the infield Beltre Andrews Kinsler and Michael Young the catcher is Napoli and he is trying to guide Matt Harrison through this start here's Alan Craig who homered last night against Derek Holland. We asked Wash before the game obviously about Mike Napoli. <laughs> The question was, is there any part of his body that's not hurting? Washington said no. Talk about a fabulous postseason and World Series. A twisted ankle that Joe talked about in last night's game. He has just been spectacular. Here's a 1-0. Alan Craig takes a strike, a ball and a strike. By the way, we are preempting regular programming tonight. Kitchen Nightmares and Fringe are preempted due to this game seven. They will be back all new next Friday. Here's a fly ball into right center and going to get it to his left is Hamilton. Two up. And the batter will be Albert Pujols with the bases empty two down here in the first. Tony La Russa talked to his team before the game individually. It was not a meeting. But he went around to one guy after another and said, you're going to have to do yourselves a favor and compartmentalize last night's thrilling game six win. You have to put it somewhere else in your mind. Because how many times have you seen it? A team just comes gliding into a critical game after a big win. and They get beaten up which is Tony La Russa's biggest fear here tonight. Here's a 1 0. See good velocity from Matt Harris in 95 but high it's 2 and 0. Berkman is hitting cleanup again tonight. Everybody's moved up a spot after that because of the absence of Matt Holliday. Since the Cardinals trail by two, Pujols will be taking here. And he takes a walk. It'll bring in Lance Berkman. And it was Lance who last night tied the game in the 10th. With a two out RBI hit. And they have learned to love the longtime rival to the Cardinals while with Houston. 
Lance Berkman. Ball one. Five in a row by Harrison. Berkman hit only four home runs batting right handed this year. 2 and 0. Oh. That is seven straight. Missing out of the hand of Matt Harrison. David Freeze. Number 23, third baseman, David Freeze. Mike Maddox out to talk to Matt Harrison, I think he's talking to him about clearing that right hip. When you block yourself out, everything is to the left side of the plate from the pitcher's standpoint. When you clear that hip, that allows you to throw the ball inside. What Freeze did last night, first player in World Series history to have a game tying RBI in the ninth, game winning RBI in extra innings. Two run triple in the ninth. And a winning home run in the 11. Pretty good pitch, called ball one. Freeze with 19 RBIs during this postseason. The biggest one, his last one. Inside corner of ball and a strike. Local product, David Freeze, the Lafayette High School. And then Merrimack. One one. Two and one. Three pitches inside. Two have missed. We talked about David Freeze and Alan Craig. Both like the ball out over the plate. Both have good power the other way, as Freeze showed in his last two at bats last night. Good change of pace from Harrison two and two. After three fastballs, an 83 mile an hour changeup. Good one. Rangers got two in the first. Cardinals have two on in their half. Six as hard as Harrison's thrown this inning. Fouled straight back. Well, they visit on the mound. We will look back to game six and David Freeze and give you our State Farm recap. Get to a better state brought to you by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. Here's that big ninth inning, two out, two strike, 
two-run triple, then a game winner. All of that following that error. That bounces in a full count, and that means that the runners will go. Texas bullpen. Runners go on a shot into left center field. This is going to tie it. David Freeze, what a roll. 2-2 two -two in the first. David Freeze on a changeup inside. His last three at bats. A triple to tie, a home run to win, a double to tie. Now it's Molina. C.J. Wilson is getting loose. We talked about, excuse me, Joe, we talked about it in last night's game. If hitters walk, they score. And it was back-to-back -back walks with two out. And then running the count full, which helped start the runners and two scored on the double by David Freeze. Now Molina, whoa. That changeup got away. One ball, one strike. C.J. Wilson is a starter, but a former closer. He was used to coming out of the bullpen, but he has not done that for two seasons now. Molina flies one to center. At the track, at the wall, it's caught by Josh Hamilton to end the inning. Man, it's a thrill a minute in this series. Every time you turn around, somebody's chasing a ball down or plugging a gap or hitting a home run or what's next? Tied after one in game seven. About some game seven facts. 35 games in World Series history for game seven. The home team has won 20 of them. They've won eight straight, and the last time a home team lost, 1979 Baltimore to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Strike one to Mike Napoli, bottom three in the lineup for each side. Each pitcher gets a do-over. One ball, one strike. Napoli is on his way to being the MVP of this World Series with what he's done with the bat, his arm, his mind calling games. The presence he has been at the bottom of the lineup for the Rangers really all postseason. Oh. That's just outside, ball two. He has 10 of the 28 RBIs that the Rangers have as a team in this World Series. That is a base hit into left. And he just keeps on hitting. Over to cut it off is Craig. And Napoli is on to start the second. Here's what he's done. Three homers, 15 RBIs. And within that, two and ten in the World Series. And he's on with nobody out here in the second. With Murphy up now and the pitcher Matt Harrison on deck. Ball one outside. Think about Napoli, he spread it around too. Hitting pitchers for home runs, for an average, throwing out base runners, getting Matt Holliday his last victim at third last night. That makes it 2 0 from Carpenter. We talked to Chris prior to last night's game in case 
there would be a game seven and in case he got the ball and he said he learned something pitching for the first time on short rest in game two of the divisional series at Philadelphia. He only lasted three. That is foul and he said you know I just had to realize that I had to pitch better with less stuff. By the time I meaning Carpenter figured it out it was too late and he was out of the game since then they threw that three hit shutout in game five to clinch it one game three of the NLCS one game one of the World Series and was good in game five of the World Series that is not hard hit the throw to second for the out and the Cardinals get the lead man but for Kyle covering one on one out we look at the numbers for Chris Carpenter 6'6", 230 pounder with eight wins in the postseason. Franchise record he has not lost here at home. His ERA in the low twos in his career pitching at Bush Stadium whether here or next door. Well when you lack stuff it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you're throwing your fastball slower. But it does mean that you're making more mistakes up in the strike zone. And you look at the hits. Josh Hamilton hit a high changeup. Michael Young a high fastball, and Mike Nap Napoli a high hanger on the slider. Jerry Lane is hearing it from Molina. A bit. After that pitch was called ball one. Harrison's up there to bunt. Period. Good RBI man on deck in Kinsler who drove home two last night. Crew chief is joined by Greg Gibson at first, Alfonso Marquez at second, Ron Culpa at third, Ted Barrett down the left field line, and Gary Cedarstrom had a good night behind the plate. He's in right. Chris Carpenter continues to show he's going to have to be innovative in the early innings. Here's the punt, and it is picked up by Pujols for out number two. And a good ball by Matt Harrison down to second to go ahead run Napoli and Murphy with Ian Kinsler walking in he singled his first time up. Those of you who care the last time both teams scored in the first inning of a World Series game seven. 1945. Chicago Cubs, Detroit Tigers. It's the last time the Cubs were in it. Right. Ball one to Ian Kinsler. Kinsler's had a nice series. Good postseason. 1 0 pitch inside. 2 0 on deck is Andres. Kinsler was not good during the regular season away from Rangers ballpark. He's been good away from home during the postseason. 2 0 pitch. 3 0. Chris Carpenter's stuff, and Dave Duncan knows it, is very flat tonight. No zip at the end. See, that's a flat slider. Tie out of the strike zone. He's been up in the strike zone. Breaking balls have been very flat. No bite. And a four pitch walk puts Kinsler on. And here comes Dave Duncan. Chris Carpenter learned that he had to pitch better with less stuff. He will put that to the test here in game seven. Cardinals have Loesch in their bullpen, they have Edwin Jackson. In their bullpen, two starters. And then they have the full complement with Westbrook, Boggs, Dotel, Lynn, Salas, Mott, Zepchinski, and Rhodes. Chris Carpenter's best friend in baseball is Doc Halliday of the Philadelphia Phillies. On December 1st, they're going to Brazil on a fishing trip and fish for peacock bass. Will he be talking about? The World Series win or that the Cardinals came so close. 
He beat Doc Halliday in game five of the division series in Philadelphia to advance. Breaking ball is one of his better ones. Strike one to Andrews. A good carpenter curveball. A chance for Elvis Andrews to get the lead again. Throw down to first and safe. Going second to third is Murphy. And they may have had Ian Kinsler if Pujols hung on. It was close. Couldn't agree with you more. I think he's out. Pujols tried to slap tag. Watch. This is a design play. Molina with that cannon behind the plate. I think he would have been out. But Pujols tried the quick tag and missed it. Kinsler's already been picked up off twice by Molina. I like Pujols left foot impeded Kinsler getting in there. It's an error on Pujols. It certainly looked like the first base umpire Greg Gibson was ready to punch him out and then when the ball came out gave the safe call. So this inning lives on for the Rangers and Andrews has a chance to put Texas back on top. First and third, two out. Back to Carpenter. It was eventful. But it's still 2-2 as we go to the bottom of the second of game number seven. And I do. Here's for Kyle leading it off and a good breaking ball. Drops in from Matt Harrison. So for Kyle, who is dropped in the order from the leadoff spot to seven, gets to lead off in the second. He is really struggling in the whole hero and two and just three for 25 in this World Series. Taking big swings. And that's bothered LaRusso as he looks at ball one up. Yeah, he doesn't have the stature for a big swing. He's a small guy. Small guys should have a, a small triggering device. Recall's been too long. That's what the players say. You hear that expression, I'm short to the ball. That means their triggering device isn't going back too far. Mark McGuire with a great triggering device during his career. Here is a 2 2. And a little bit different hitter than for Paul. Because that misses up and away from Harrison, who walked two and then paid a price for it in the first. Yet for Call 0 and 2, now it's a 3 2 pitch. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. For Call is moved down the lineup, and that pays off here in the second. Andres can't get to it. Now it skips Schumacher. Normally the sacrifice would be in order, but with the pitcher on deck, no way. Schumacher's been swinging it well, 375 over his last 16 games since the 23rd of September, and mixed within that is a 471 average this postseason. Not active during the NLCS with a strained oblique. Just like the Rangers in the top of this second, the Cardinals get a leadoff hit in the bottom of the second. To the shortstop, Elvis Andrews, the second out over to first, got them both. Well turned, 6 4 3, and the bases are empty behind Matt Harrison. Elvis Andres knew that Schumacher's a fast runner, gets the ball quickly to Kinsler, Kinsler just out at first base. By the width of a shoelace. And so with two out, nobody on, Carpenter is up there to swing the bat. He has two hits this postseason, had 11 during the regular year. It takes a strike. The Rangers in the third will have the big bats. Hamilton, Young, and Beltre. Everybody gets on Nelson Cruz. Ball one.
this postseason across baseball of the possible 41 games that could have been played 38 games to be played. Every division series went the distance except one. The AL and NLCS both went six. That ends the inning and that strikeout number one for Matt Harrison as he tries to settle in. Images from game seven, which rolls into the third inning. Texas and St. Louis tied at two. To learn how you can get involved. By the way, we're members of the Joplin South Little League. Joplin just devastated during the summer. Here is an 0 1, and it's up and away from Carpenter. This could be an inning of opportunity for the Texas Rangers and a tough frame for Chris Carpenter, who has struggled through two. Strike two on Hamilton. It's so important how a catcher and a pitcher handle a lineup. Meat of the lineup, the teeth of the lineup for the Rangers do up this inning. Two and two. Here's a 2 2. And a ground ball to the shortstop for Cobb. Had to hurry, got his man. One out. And Hamilton did all he could, hustling down the line. As we talked about, 38 of the possible 41 games being played this postseason. And 13 of those previous 37 have been one run games which is the most all time so it's been tight it's been dramatic last night a one run game as the Cardinals won in 11 here's young strike one every game in St. Louis has been a one run game none of them in Texas were one run games but every game's been tight except for game three yeah 16 to 7 Cardinal win otherwise it has been a battle from beginning to end young chased it strike two way outside and low Carpenter with a gift strike to Michael Young. Here's a one two breaking ball is tapped foul. That caught some of the home plate umpire Jerry Lane. So like a good home plate umpire will do buy some time for the catcher to let the pain subside Molina spend some time talking to the crew chief. But his eyes stop watering. One two pitch, two out. Strikeout number two. Good slider again off the plate to get Michael Young. Joe, we talked about one run games. There is a one man show on Broadway to give you the idea, an idea of the reach of the World Series here in the Heartland. Hugh Jackman is starring in a one man show on Broadway. And last night, Three times he interrupted the show to give the score of the Cardinals and Texas Rangers game. He came out the third time from off stage and said, We go to game seven. And he's an Aussie. <laughs> Unbelievable. How about that? Here is Beltre being hit by a pitch. See where it caught him. Him on the left elbow and then off the mask of Yadier Molina. It's a two out base runner. And now Nelson Cruz. Carpenter's given up three home runs in this series. Napoli a two run shot in game one. 
And then solo home runs by Moreland and Beltre in game five. Has already caught one. He nearly caught another and was thinking about firing behind Beltre at first there. Ball one. When Yadier Molina gets in the habit of throwing the bases, it's base runner beware night. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are. It does not matter. Here's a fly ball into left. Cruz got under it. It is eighth home run of the postseason here last night. The tie a record. This one a big swing, but out number three. Rangers have left four, bottom of the third. Tell Hugh Jackman we're tied 2 2. Matt Harrison ready to go in a 2 2 game, and he hits the inside corner as he is trying to settle in. Breaking ball got the inside part to Terrio, who grounded out to second his first time up. Batting leadoff, first time this postseason, and he grounds to third foul. Time for our Volkswagen Passat trivia question. How many of the 35 previous World Series deciding game sevens were walk-off wins? Little did we know last night when we gave you our trivia question provided by Volkswagen about walk-off game six wins. The answer was three. We ask the question next year, the answer will be four. Terrio trying to dump one into right, and Cruz is there. One out. It was Fisk, Kirby Puckett. The last one was Freeze, and Joe Carter. Joe Carter taking Mitch Williams out of the yard. Sure, Mitch loves it when I attach his name to that every time. He's probably laughing about that right now. The very few times Mitch can laugh about that moment, but he's learned to accept it. Hey, big deal. As Chuck Tanner used to say, Chuck Tanner, the ma manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, he said, used to say, you know, the best thing next to winning a major league game, losing a major league game. At least you were there. Yep. Alan Craig took a ball. Now takes a strike over the inside corner. Harrison, after a wild first inning with back to back two out walks, the first of which was to him, has settled down a bit. Here's a 1 1. Another good pitch, strike two. Matt Harrison, a lot more confidence in his off speed stuff this inning. A little heavily amped in the first inning, certainly understandable. 14 game winner from the regular season foul back. The Rangers are playing in the first playoff game seven in franchise history. Meanwhile, Tony LaRusso, despite being in his 33rd year as a major league manager, has won two world championships, is managing in his first World Series game seven. Been there before in the LCS. But now he is here where one game decides it all. One, two. Outside. Two and two. from memory once the next game starts and that's the beauty of baseball where you get your heart broken one night even in the postseason a lot of times you get to go right back out there the next night. Well specifically Joe I think what did it for the Rangers was scoring those two runs in the first inning. That erased last night now we have a new one. Three two. Craig hits it in the air to right back at the wall. The Cardinals have taken a game seven. 3-2 lead and a home run by Alan Craig. A 
again, we talked about David Freeze and Alan Craig. The power they have to right field. It's worth saying again, Alan Craig had to teach himself to pull the ball. Here is Pujols, strike one. Cardinals with their first lead of the night. Strike two. Here it is again. Watch where the pitch is. Out away. Full extension. Alan Craig with his second home run against Matt Harrison in the World Series. Pools went up to get that pitch. 95 mile an hour 0-2 delivery. It's still 0-2. Craig suffered through a broken kneecap during the season. There was a time where LaRusso liked what he was doing so much with the bat. The former third baseman then turned outfielder. They tried to cram into the lineup as their second baseman where he made eight starts. Pujols golfs it. Foul ball. And dropped by Michael Young. He has had a rough series at first base Made that's two not, errors last night not an easy play but certainly catchable I mean, it wasn't the over the shoulder variety and with a guy like who holes up there you don't want to give him a second chance we talked to Michael Young he said the toughest position he's had to learn he's played everywhere and been willing to do it as first base hard hit Broken back and Beltre from a knee down to get it. Two out. By the way, they did not give an error on that ball that Michael Young could not connect with down the right field side in foul territory. Two out. Here's Berkman. in franchise history Michael Young we go to the fourth Alan Craig a home run and the Cardinals lead it it's game seven three two move into the fourth inning Cardinals have their first lead on the home run by Alan Craig it was hit two in this World Series against Matt Harrison here's Napoli bottom three in the lineup for Texas Breaking ball drops in for strike one, and C.J. Wilson is getting loose again. Second time he's been up, he got up in the first. Pitcher due up third in this inning. Strike two from Carpenter. Two straight curve balls, and perhaps the best curves that Carpenter has thrown tonight. He struck out Napoli his last start in game five on two curve balls. See if he goes back out there with the hook. He does, and he gets him. Strikeout number three. Three straight curves gets Napoli. One out of the fourth this week on Fox NFL Sunday. Drew Brees and the Saints are here in St. Louis to take on the Rams. The Cardinals battle the Ravens, Vikings, Panthers, Lions, and an interesting matchup against Tim Tebow and the Broncos. Are the Redskins taking on the Bills in Toronto? Strike one on Murphy. Coverage begins this week with a built Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And in that pregame show, we understand our own John Lynch has a sit down interview with Tim Tebow, who was a comeback winner as the starter last week over Miami. John Lynch knows about this game of baseball was a pitcher at Stanford with Mike Messina and threw harder than Messina. Talented athlete. We're glad he is in the Fox family. Two balls and a strike 
One out, nobody on. Murphy bounced into a force out his first time. Now chops one to Pujols. Beats Carpenter, two out. A little more uneventful than the last time Chris Carpenter covered first base on a little lob from Albert Pujols in game one. At least he's on his feet this time. Last not, time. Not diving. Last time it was a face full of dirt. Yeah. His right hand exposed to the spikes of Elvis Andrews. Kind of an awkward step on the bag by Carpenter, who now has the luxury of dealing with Harrison, who was 0 for 9 this season during interleague play. The base is empty. Strike one. One ball, two strikes. Cardinals will have Freeze, Molina, and Fercal. The bottom of this fourth inning. Harrison won't go easily. Matt Harrison was drafted by Atlanta in 03, and he was part of that big deal pulled off by John Daniels. Young John Daniels coming to Texas with Neftali Feliz, the closer. Elvis Andrews, the starting shortstop, and Jared Saltalamacchia, the catcher. Inning is over. Well, how about the last three World Series advance for David Freeze? Game tying triple with two outs and two strikes in the ninth inning last night. The home run to win it. And a game tying two out, two run double in the first. So he has moved up to the number five spot. Freeze is now hitting better than 464 here at home during this postseason. Strike two. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. Ken? Joe, last night after the game, the Cardinals brought Freeze into a conference room inside their clubhouse. Waiting was Jim Edmonds, Freeze's boyhood hero and a guy that he was traded for in December 2007. Now Edmonds was there with his five-year-old son Landon. Freeze is Landon's favorite player, and Freeze said that Edmonds actually got choked up by the moment. Edmonds, you remember, well, he had a pretty memorable Game 6 walk-off himself for the Cardinals. Game 6 of the 2004 NLCS. That was against Houston, and there's David Freeze. That was the, I guess, the during picture, and now the after, after a late night here at the ballpark. Landon all tucked in. And again, his dad, Landon's dad, Jim, who's still in the area and, and very visible, great guy, was traded for David Freeze in December of 07, bringing Freeze back to the organization he grew up cheering for when starting at Lafayette High School. And look at the company. Now, Freeze is with Edmonds forever linked, and Tim McCarver with extra inning home runs. Yours wasn't a walk-off. No. Did they even call them walk-offs back then? I don't think so. That was the top of the 10th inning at Yankee Stadium. Right fielder, one of the more indelible uh, memories, right fielder was Mickey Mantle. And to see number seven, tracking down a fly ball that you hit. Ooh. Here's a 2-0. Molina with a base hit into center. On with one out here in the fourth inning. Takes a wide turn, but... A nice play by Hamilton. It's a single. And now for Carl, who singled his first time up in his new position in this lineup. Trying to make the seventh spot lucky for the Cardinals in game seven. He singled his first time. And a guy who, despite coming up with the Braves, playing with the Dodgers, is this year playing in his first World Series. 
Ball one low. Joe Torre told us a couple of years ago when Fercal came to the Dodgers, all those years he competed against Fercal and had seen him in early play, what have you. He had no idea how good of a player he really was and how much of a leader he was in the clubhouse and in the dugout. Of course, you can see the talent when you're playing against somebody. You could see the arm, see the range at shortstop. But the leadership abilities and capabilities you have to manage to see. See the Cardinals get some action going on the bases by starting the runner. Wouldn't be a bad idea right here even though Molina can't run. Speed of the runner however has nothing to do with it and this is the ideal hit and run count two balls and one strike. Pretty good pitch called for ball two. Now Scott Feldman gets loose. He pitched here last night. Big swing by for call two and two. That's that big swing that we were talking about. Tony La Russa talks about small man too big a swing. is getting loose but Harrison has for Kalov now in the left handed hitting Schumacher on deck one out in the inning runner at first and a base hit into right Molina stops at second two on one out for the Cardinals in the fourth and for Kahl is two for two Yadier Molina saw the play that Nelson Cruz made in game four of the American League Championship Series in the eighth inning nailing Miguel Cabrera at home plate and Yachty says uh uh I'm not trying Nelly <laughs> get a big bat hits home runs he's got a powerful arm Nelson Cruz in right and here's Mike Maddox out for the second time tonight he had a visit in the first and now he's visiting Harrison in the fourth Cardinals lead 3 2. And they have Schumacher at the plate. Bounced into a double play his first time up. Pitcher Chris Carpenter. Good pitch from Harrison in on the hand, strike one. Harrison ties Skip Schumacher up with that fastball. Well, that's a good one. Right in on the waist. Don't want to throw that pitch down because all left handers have to do is drop the bat head. Here's a 1 1 on the outside corner strike two. back to back good pitches from Matt Harrison. This will be the 70th pitch of the night for the Texas left hand. Lead runner does not have good speed Molina. To that pitch in on the hands. Harrison's one two is outside, two and two. Outfielder for the Rangers shifted way around toward left field. David Murphy, the left fielder, Josh Hamilton playing Schumacher to hit the ball to left. 
Broke his back and grounded one foul. That Tanner is a uh, is a bat boy that thinks ahead. He had another bat just sitting right there. They didn't have to go to the dugout. Yeah, baby. That's just being postseason ready. Yes, sir. Counts two and two, two on, one out. Another broken bat. The only out at first, and the runners advance to second and third. That bat broke in three pieces. One of those stay in the hands, the right hand of Skip Schumacher, and the other part breaks in two pieces. Players refer to that as having their kitchen gotten into, and that thing was in the pantry. They're still picking up pieces of that yeah. thing. Jerry Lane is going to give some to Ryan Terrio. Here, here's a toothpick. Well, this inning now is up to a battle between Harrison and Carpenter. Carpenter can handle the bat. But he will be tested by the good stuff of Harrison, strike one. There's it second and third, two out here in the fourth. for Harrison is to throw strikes and the count evens one and one Chris Carpenter has that little stroke to right field right center and he almost seems to try to place over the second baseman's head Cardinal fans have seen him do it a lot and that's ball two and if Harrison loses Carpenter the right handed hitting Terrio on deck the right hander Feldman getting loose that could be it for Harrison. Here's a 2 1. A pop up into right chin in the inning. Nelson Cruz is there. Cardinals strand two have left three on the night. We've played four and it's three two Cardinals into the fifth back after this from your local Fox station. There's Jim Edmonds here at the old ballpark. The aforementioned and the man traded for David Freeze as we go into the fifth inning here in game seven. And the Cardinals lead it 3 2. Top of the order for each side will bat. That means Kinsler, Andrews, and Hamilton for the Rangers. And that's under the glove of Freeze. Another hit. For Ian Kinsler on base for the third time tonight. And he went after that first pitch and got it by Freeze. Well, we talked about it in the first game. David Freeze playing even with the bag and somehow continuing to anticipate a bunt by Ian Kinsler. He was burned in game one as the first batter of the series and gets burned again right here. Game seven with Kinsler's power, one run game, he's not bunting. See how the Rangers want to play it now with Andrews at the plate. Time call. Time. Elvis has walked and scored and grounded back to Carpenter. Rangers have one stolen base. In this World Series. That's the only one by Kinsler. In the ninth inning of game two. Ball is up and in as Andrew showed a bunt. Ball one. On deck is Hamilton. He has an RBI double tonight. Then Michael Young, who has one as well. 
So many ways that Ron Washington can go here with speed on the bases, contact hitter at the plate, and a favorable count of one nothing. He was kicking himself for not paying more attention to Ian Kinsler when he stole that base in game two. It was against Mott and Molina. Now it's Carpenter. That's because Tony La Russa calls most of the throwovers by Cardinal pitchers, relayed by Yadier Molina. One is foul. Strike one. Kinsler's trying to get it started again. He had a leadoff hit in the first, then wandered too far. And was caught stealing as Molina threw behind him, walked, and was stranded in the second. Now he's on here in the fifth inning with a base hit, sharply hit into left. I think the bunt's the least thing I would consider here. Carpenter's not throwing that hard. Andres makes good contact. But now two strikes. Bunting again? Beg your pardon, one strike. Count two and one. See if Ron Washington changes it. And gets a little more aggressive. Hold the ball, you figure that. I think he will. Hold it, hold it. That's a that's a toss over from Tony La Russa. Good enough to get Kinsler down to second, and the sacrifice is good with Carpenter feeding Terrio. Tying run is at second with one out here in the fifth. Hamilton coming up. Take a look at tonight's Chase Freedom cashback players to watch. Last night, Josh Hamilton, his first home run in 83 at bats, first of the postseason. Tonight, he has an RBI double. Last night, Albert Pools. Got his first hit. It was a big one. His first hit since game three when he had a one out double in the ninth inning. He scored the first of two runs. Ball one down and away. Don't get short change. Get your cash back with Chase Freedom. Here's the tying run with one out. Seventy pitches on short rest. Pitching into the fifth better than he did his first try at short rest when he pitched three at Philadelphia. Here's a 2-0. Two and one. Carpenter zeroing in on that outside corner with that pitch. And getting the call from Jerry Lane. Right. You could hear Rafael Furcal saying back, back to Ian Kinsler. Behind the runner. With one out, a three walk. Popped up, left side, foul ball, make it out of play. And it is caught by Freeze. Leaning over the railing for round number two. Joe, we talked about this in last night's game. That when you think a ball's going to be near the railing, get to the railing and make the play. You can always back off. And a good play, a fine play by David Freeze. Very, very nice. Rafael Furcal falling down also 
David Freeze falling down and for call slipping right behind him. Now Michael Young trying to do something with his leadoff hit by Kinsler. Time run at second, two out. Strike one. Fastball at 93 all night. That missed up and in. A ball and a strike. Adrian Beltre on deck. Top of the order will bat for the Cardinals in the bottom of this fifth. Strike two and a good rip by Michael Young. That was hittable. The ball in the fatter part of the plate. Good swing by Young. He missed it. Still one and two. strikeouts and a nice defensive play in the inning to support Carpenter by David Freeze halfway through game seven the home team is up by one the one run game game seven of the World Series the commissioner's trophy will be presented at the end of the night will it be handed to a representative of the Cardinals for the 11th time Will the Rangers have their first in franchise history? Scott Feldman takes over and finds the strike zone with Terrio up. Alan Craig and Albert Pujols the next two. Feldman in relief of Harrison who went four, allowed three runs, five hits. Two walks, one strikeout, a home run. Late swing and a foul strike two on Terrio. Dario told Ken Rosenthal he couldn't sleep last night, got to the park at one, and found out that he was not only in the starting lineup, but he was in the leadoff spot here in the most important game of the year. Of his life. The 0 2. Check swing foul. Former Cub. Brief while the Dodgers are now in his first year in St. Louis. Spoiled the pitch to stay 0 and 2. There are the numbers for Matt. 77 pitches on the night. Got a two run lead in the first and then gave that right back with back to back walks and a two out two run double by freeze. And the go ahead home run hit by Craig in the third. Good battle being put together by Terrio and Feldman. That's the bullpen for Texas last night in game six. Three blown saves. How about another foul ball by Terry. Rangers and cards have turned glaring weaknesses in their bullpens into perhaps overused riches here in the in the World Series. Cardinals 3-0 in the NLCS. And the Rangers 4 0 with excellent earned run averages. And a different story here in the next run. It's over but low. Meanwhile, the one guy that it seems 
Ron Washington is hesitant to use as Alexi Ogando, who has really struggled last night, couldn't throw strikes. Broken back. Andrews to his left. Gets the out. One away. That will bring in Alan Craig. And Allen has hit two. Against Harrison, his first at bat. Game three. Against Harrison, his second at bat. Game seven. Product of the Cardinal Farm System digs in one for two. And also a product of the University of California, Berkeley, where he attended school. Scholastic all pack. Pack 10. He did it a home run last night off Derek Holland, which made it a 7 to 5 game when he went deep in the eighth. It's Derek, who is in the bullpen and available again tonight. All two. And at the time, we find it kind of figured well that helped the Cardinals it inches them closer uh, with that Texas bullpen is going to be tough to tie it. well the Cardinals did it twice ninth 10 one of the 11 Tim you were involved in three game sevens in your career does it ever calm down just turn into a regular game. Are you kidding? It doesn't calm down even when I'm in the booth. No. Here's a 3 0. A strength to make it 3 0. I mean, what you said about Ryan Terrio makes all the sense in the world saying he couldn't sleep last night, gets to the park at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the way it goes in the postseason, but particularly the World Series. Feldman backs off. As Craig steps out. Counts three and one with Albert Pujols on deck. One out, nobody on. And that's a one out walk with Pujols coming up. The World Series on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Thanks for making Chevrolet and baseball a part of America for the last 100 years. Pleasant night, all things considered, on the 28th of October and up above. Aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get DirecTV. This is a key moment in this ball game right here. Thelman going after Pools. Good pitch to tie him up strike one. That was not a hit and run, by the way, with Alan Craig at first base. Thrown out twice the other night. Good pitch from Feldman in on the hands. We did ask Tony La Russa if uh, Albert Pujols would have the hit and run. He said absolutely He'd do anything he wants to do. That didn't change after the game five. Pujols up twice. Alan Craig was thrown out. Goes down as caught stealing, but his movement on the bases on a swing at the plate. First time against Agando in the seventh, he couldn't swing. It was over his head. Strength two. Berkman gets to turn around and bat left-handed. He's on deck. That is his power side. Led the big leagues in grounding into double plays, Pujols. The Cardinals set an NL record. And that caught a piece of Pujols to put two on with one out. Just grazed him. You can see Napoli setting up inside. And that one hit number five on his uniform. That is considered a hit by pitch if it hits the jersey. It looked like that's all it got. 
So a bad break for the Rangers as Feldman was trying to work Pujols in. And now it's Craig at second, Pujols at first, one out for Lance Burton. Yeah, with the count 0 and 2, trying to come inside, get Pujols off the plate. And he came too far inside. is the pile up of people outside the stadium. Straight away center field. Berkman two on one out. Ball one inside. Some thought Berkman was finished after last year. C.J. Wilson gets loose again. His numbers were down. He went to the Yankees, did not make a big impact. Cardinals put him back in the outfield and what a season he had. An all-star in 2011. He's up on the count here, 2-0. Chopper on the right side, going to be a tough play. Feldman gets there, and the runners advance to second and third. Two out, and a big out for Scott Feldman. Because he fell behind Berkman and throws the sinker to get the ground ball, Young completes the play to Feldman. And now with Freeze up, we'll see if the Rangers want to put him on. As hot as he's been in deal with Molina or come after the Cardinal third baseman. Or work him inside. The weakness of David Freeze, we talked about it during the series about how he likes the ball out over the plate. But after the ALCS, Ron Washington kiddingly but seriously telling us that he's not sure his pitchers could pitch around a lot of hitters. And when he has that feeling about him, he puts up four fingers. Put them on. We'll see. We're going to put them on to load them up. And test Molina, who had a career year swing in the back. Chant. That's establishing a lot of credibility at a very young age for David Freeze. Molina has a hit tonight. He has seven RBIs in this World Series, ten on the postseason. At one point, his manager Tony La Russa said, I don't care if he hits zero, he's going to be my catcher for what he does behind the plate. Well, he hit 305, career high 14 home runs, career high 65 RBIs this season. Bases loaded, two out. Craig at third, Pujols at second, Freeze at first. Three. 
Strike one. Again, the ball hasn't left the infield. The Cardinals have the bases loaded two out and a 3-1 count on Molina. That'll bring Molina back to the plate with a full count. It's one of those good, good break, bad break pitches and the good break for the Cardinals it starts the runners the bad break is it doesn't play to run three two pitch outside to make it four two a bases loaded walk and the Cardinals lead by two. How about that expression by Mike Napoli? Wanting that pitch for a strike. Watch his body language. Here comes Ron Washington. Rakal is coming up. Right on the edge. Feldman is gone. CJ Wilson coming in. Cardinals have the bases loaded, two out up by two. Feldman came close with that last pitch. Forced home a run with his third walk of the inning, also hit a batter. It's 4 2, and now CJ Wilson, who has tied a record for the most walks in a single postseason. Had a record set by Jared Wright back in 97. Wright of the Indians takes over and there is no room to put anybody. Rafael for call is two for two in the number seven spot. And C.J. Wilson the former closer. For the Rangers. He saved as many as 24 games in a season. Hits for call. To make it five two. thing anybody in this ballpark and across this country was thinking was that a sailing fastball to hit Raphael for call in the hip and the Cardinals score another. Now it's Schumacher eighth man to bat in the inning ball has not left the infield ball one. Two hit batsmen in the inning, including Pujols, who scored on a hit by pitch with Fercal at the plate. Breaking ball for a strike. And it's one and one. Schumacher's 0 for 2. Strike two. CJ Wilson trying to hold it right here and keep his team in the game. And a strikeout ends it. As the Cardinals come up with two, they've stranded six. We've played five. And the Cardinals lead the Rangers by three. Here's Adrian Beltre dealing with Chris Carpenter. 
A strike hits the outside corner. Beltre, Cruz, and Napoli. Sixth inning of a 5 2 game. Strike two. We're right on the corner with both cut fastballs. Here's Cruz. He is next. Here's an 0 2. Back to Carpenter. And just past the top of the hour as we give you our Sherlock Holmes two game summary. David Freeze off the emotional game six tied the game in the first inning with a two out two run double. Then Alan Craig with a go ahead home run in the third. A bases loaded walk made it four two and for was hit to make it five two and the Cardinals without benefit of a hit. Got two runs in the bottom of the fifth. Cruz takes a ball down and away. Nelson's 0 for 2. Went deep last night, has done so eight times this postseason to tie a record. Late swing and a foul, strike one. The Rangers have 11 outs with which to score three runs while holding the Cardinals down. Carpenter deserves credit for settling into this game after that. Really the rough first inning and second although he gave up just one hit in the second. Here's a fly ball into left back at the track. Alan Craig will leap and make the catch to out. Getting to the fence jumping the ball would have been out. Had he not made the catch or hit the top of the fence. Exchanging leather for a run. I think I think your initial call was right. I think that ball was gone. I think so. That look was the best most definitive. Here's Napoli. Carpenter's one out away from pitching six innings here tonight. So Craig is homered here tonight. Remember, he started because of the injury last night to Matt Holliday. He's homered now, took one away. Napoli is saying, wait. Now, that pitch from Feldman, he's saying that's the same pitch. The pitch from Feldman to Yadier Molina was that same pitch. Now it's a strike. Exactly what he's saying. And the count's one and one. Molina tried to frame it. Ball two. Nobody knows better than Napoli, who's been receiving three pitchers for the Rangers so far tonight. Fly ball into right. Berkman is there to win the inning. And Carpenter has a one, two, three, sixth. Bottom of the sixth. What a catch by Craig. Do up third in this inning. Went up to get it. Cardinals up by three. Both games are only on Fox Sports. Tim, it was interesting that during the break, Nick Punto came into the on deck circle and it looked like he was going to bat for Carpenter to start the inning. And then after Wilson took the majority of his warm up tosses, Carpenter came out. To the on deck circle, they brought Punto back and they want Carpenter to go back for the seventh. And I, I think Carpenter had something to do with the fact that he's going back for the seventh. He went down to get his bat and he set up at 0 and 2. While his body is in the on, is in the batter's box, his mind is on the top of the seventh. One out. Two game here in the bottom of the sixth, and here is Terrio. The Geico in game box score. Terrio got the start leading off. He's hitless. Alan Craig is hit a home run and taken one away. Albert Pujols has scored twice. One of the times, thanks to a two out, two run double by David Freeze. Yadier Molina with an RBI, bases loaded one. 
Not only is for call two for two but he was hit by a pitch. The force home a run in that two run fifth. C.J. Wilson. And this is low. C.J. is due up second. In the seventh. So this will be it for C.J. He hit the first man he faced with the first pitch for the bases loaded. For call last inning to force home a run. Then a strikeout and ground out now starts the inning. And they count 2 and 0 Ontario. Ryan is grounded out two times and fly to right. Into center field and Hamilton to his right gets to it to it. And it's time for a Nikon one replay and it's Alan Craig with that catch up at the very top of the wall in the top of this sixth inning. You make the judgment. Would it have been out? Probably bounced on out. I think so. Carpenter appreciated the effort for a guy who was also homered, walked, scored twice. Ball one down and in. Alan Craig, the hitting hero in game one with a base hit. For an RBI off the bench. Against Alexio Gondo. He did it again in game two, then homered in game three. He's homered tonight. Homered last night. So two of the hitting heroes are Alan Craig and David Freeze. Berkman's had a very good World Series. As Arthur Rhodes gets loose. Pools had that monster game three. A big one out double last night in the ninth. Here's a one one. Strike two. We talk about Carpenter on short rest. CJ Wilson made the start against Carpenter on Monday night. It's interesting that Arthur Rhodes is throwing with David Murphy the left handed batter leading off in the seventh inning because Carpenter is already hit in this inning. Maybe he's just up throwing. I, I would think so instead of warming up to come in the game. Count even on Craig two and two. Rhodes did not pitch in game six. Didn't pitch in game five. He has not been out there for a while. Since game two, since giving up that sacrifice fly by Josh Hamilton. Here's a 2 2. Craig strikes out. And a perfect inning from C.J. Wilson sends game seven into the seventh. 5 2 St. Louis. Back after this from your local Fox station. Murphy is Carpenter finds strike one. And now Octavia Dotel has joined Arthur Rhodes, Renteria in 97, and then Luis Gonzalez. Beating Rivera and the Yankees in 01. Breaking ball is in for a strike from Carpenter, who may have talked his way back into the game. After the Cardinals initially sent a pinch hitter to the on-deck circle, that is rocketed down into the corner. One hop out of play, a ground rule double. And a good start to this seventh inning for the Rangers down three. And a bad start for a hanging curveball from Chris Carpenter. An 0-2 curveball right in the middle of the plate. Just crushed down the right field line by David Murphy. And with that, Andy Chavez will bat. The bunt, always a possibility from Chavez. 
And that's it for Carpenter who goes six plus. And this crowd will let him hear it. night it was the Cardinals coming back from a three run deficit to force a thrilling game six win tonight as we're in the seventh it's the Rangers down by three and Arthur Rhodes will deal with your Vitt Torrealba who's was going to bat for Chavez who was batting for C.J. Wilson Rhodes coming into the game to face Andy Chavez so in effect Arthur Rhodes is pitching to two hitters, not Chavez, but Torre Alba as a pinch hitter for Chavez, and that will be it. Then Dotel will be in the game to pitch to Ian Kitzler. Carpenter gets into the seventh inning as Torre Alba waits and takes a strike. Arthur Rhodes is in his 20th season. Major League Baseball in his first World Series. Was designated by assignment by these Texas Rangers in August. So he started the year with Texas. He ends it pitching against him in the World Series and he misses high for ball one. So he gets a World Series ring either way. Like Benji Molina last year. Right. Started last year with the Giants, ended with the Texas Rangers. Here comes a 1 1. Torrey Alba lies one into center. Schumacher is there. Murphy tags, but does not go anywhere. One out. So Torrey Alba skies one into center. Ian Kinsler will not face Rhodes. He will deal with Dotel. So Tony La Russa diving into that bullpen. Octavio Dotel into the action with the Cardinals up by three in the seventh. Well, Chris Carpenter's night is finished. He goes 91 pitches. It's into the seventh inning. Arthur Rhodes, a nice job. You go from a guy who's been in the big leagues for 20 years to a reliever who's been with 12 major league teams, which ties a record, and he is involved in his first World Series. And he will deal with Ian Kinsler, who's been on base three times. And then Elvis Andrews with Sepchinski getting loose in case Hamilton comes up in a big spot here in the seventh. Octavio Dotel, his fifth World Series appearance. He was the loser in game five when Michael Young doubled the right center to lead off that eighth inning. He ultimately scored on that ball hit by Napoli, and Dotel took the loss. Last team to come back from a three run deficit to win game seven, the 86 Mets, which is kind of a footnote in history after the Red Sox, Bill Buckner play at first base lost game six they had a lead and blew that in game seven runner at second one out the batter is Kinsler two singles and a walk against Carpenter Kinsler red hot it takes a strike It appears Mike Adams will be on the mound for the Rangers in the bottom of this seventh with Pools, Berkman, and Freeze coming up. Here is an 0 1 from Dotel. A bunt in the air. Strike two. With the Rangers three runs down, he saw Freeze back. Freeze was in earlier. Base hit shot by him. We talked about game one. 
now the Rangers are trailing by three where the bunt's a good play, but you can see David Freeze back at third base. So if you're David Freeze, you don't know where, where to play Ian Kinsley. Well, now he can go back with two strikes. <laughs> Under at second, one out in the seventh. Big swing by Kinsler. A foul is the result. Gives you an idea of the ferocity of those foul tips. Watch Benji Molina. Yanni Molina. Mm. And the count still 0 and 2. Runner at second, one out. Dotel. Two out. Fastball from a fastball hitter and one guy in this part very very happy the starter Chris Carpenter now it's Elvis Andrews we've mentioned this before when the Cardinals made their trade in a three way deal with the White Sox and the Blue Jays in July. Everybody looked at the player the Cardinals gave up Colby Rasmus and said how can they give up on such talent. that's so young. That's inside two and oh but what it brought the Cardinals. Was not only Edwin Jackson who was a starter to help solidify the rotation. But Mark Zemchinski, who may someday be a starter, and he's been invaluable out of the bullpen for La Russa, and the guy on the mound, Octavio Dotel, who doesn't seem to get any older. Two and one. He's still got great stuff, a nasty slider, and he can get big outs. And he's been good for the morale in that Cardinal bullpen if you talk to the guys down there. Counts two and one. And one way or the other, this is Dotel's last hitter as Zepchinski is warming. John Mozeliak, the Cardinal GM. Here comes a two one. Three and one. And if Andrews can get on base, the reigning AL MVP will get a chance to bat, representing the tying run. And he'll do it against Zepchinski. The 3 1 pitch. Glide into center, should end the inning. And it's time to stretch. As Dotel does his job. And Chris Carpenter was terrific here tonight on short rest for the St. Louis Cardinals. The frustration by Elvis Andrews who slammed down his bat then his helmet. The reaction by Dotel. Albert Pujols will lead it off in the bottom of this seventh inning. And in his World Series game number three. Three home runs. Five hits. Six RBIs. Fourteen total bases all tied or set. World Series single game records. He has only one other hit that came last night but it was big a one out double in the ninth inning when the Cardinals scored two on the triple by freeze to tie it. And again and it seems like it's been said 20 times but this could be the last at bat as a Cardinal for Albert Pujols a free agent to be. We said it three times last night. They said it at the end of the regular season. Breaking ball from Adams, strike one. Mentioned last night the 45 second standing ovation on the 25th of September against the Cubs. And they did it in the division series against Philly. And then they did it in the series against the Brewers in the NLCS. And then last night, here he is again. Here's the 0 1. 
Strike two. Everyone standing even across the street trying to get a peek from the top of that garage out beyond the center field wall. Here is an 0-2. Another foul. The Wolves tonight has walked and scored, been hit by a pitch and scored. The difference, really the difference in this game, the breathing room came in the fifth for the Cardinals when they scored two without a hit. Three walks and two hit batsmen. Yeah, walk with the bases loaded, a hit batsman with the bases loaded. Otherwise, this is a one-run game. We are in the seven. And we are in the seven. Here's the 0-2. Off the end of the bat. The Rangers, meanwhile, scored two in the top of the first, and since then have had only four base runners over the following six innings. Everybody taking their pictures on cell phones, cameras wondering if this is it. What's it going to be here in the seventh inning, leading off? A strikeout from Mike Adams, one away. What a good job by Adams. He fed who holds everything, sliders away, and struck him out on that sinking fastball inside. As the flash bulbs go off. One out in the seventh. And the batter will be Lance Berkman. Cardinals have Lance Lynn getting loose. Lance last night gave up three runs. And an inning and two thirds when he allowed two home runs. And later an inherited runner scored. By Dotel, an inherited runner he had taken from Lynn. Ball one down and into Berkman. <laughs> Off the end of the bat under the glove of Adams. Safe with one out. And Elvis Andrews did all he could. Mike Adams falling to the first base side off the end of the bat under the glove of Adams barehanded by Andrews not in time. One on one out for David Fries. Was intentionally walked his last time up. That led to the bases loaded walk for the RBI by Molina. And for Kahn was hit by a pitch to make it 5 2. That, by the way, was the first intentional walk of the year for David Freeze. One down and in. It's something we mentioned at the beginning of this World Series. Remember that home field advantage is tied to the winning league in the All Star game. It was C.J. Wilson who gave up a home run to Prince Fielder of all people. Prince Fielder basically provided with that swing home field advantage for the Cardinals in this World Series. Rangers won two of three in Arlington. Won one of two here. C.J. Wilson gave it up. Cardinals trying to sweep the last two and hand Texas back-to-back -back losses for the first time since the 24th and 25th of August. That's how long it's been. It's inside. 
Ball two. About two and a half weeks after the All Star break was the trading deadline. And the Texas Rangers went out and made some deals, one of whom was Mike Adams. And his teammate, Heath Bell of the San Diego Padres, was it expected to be traded. He wasn't. But in the All Star game, he did slide into the mound in the eighth inning. <laughs> Here's a 2 0. Freeze took the ball. Pretty good pitch, 3 0. He fell one of the great guys in the game, but he stayed with San Diego, and here Mike Adams is in the World Series. As the slider is just low. Runner at first, one out, and a three-run seventh inning lead for St. Louis. 3-0 pitch on its way from Mike Adams to David Freeze. Strike one. is inside for ball four and it's two on with one out. The one thing a catcher wants with the three two count on the hitter with the runner on at first base is a quick call from the home plate umpire. If you don't get one then you're inclined to make the throw anyway. Napoli could not take the chance that that pitch may have been a strike. He completes the play but it was inside. Michael Gonzalez gets loose for the Rangers in their pen. We look ahead to Fox NFL Sunday this week with a one on one between John Lynch and Tim Tebow. The new starter in Denver. Good matchups. That's this Sunday. Tonight has a bases loaded walk for an RBI and a base hit. One for two. Rangers have handed out 41 walks in this World Series. That is the most in a single World Series. Cardinals as a franchise are seven and three. In World Series game seven. First one, 1926. First time they won a World Series against the vaunted New York Yankees. We talked about it the other night. Babe Ruth making the last out of the clinching game when the Cardinals won it by being thrown out at second base. Bob O'Farrell was the catcher that year. Two on, one out, one ball, no strikes. Up the middle of base hit. Here comes Berkman. Hamilton's throw is cut off, partially another run. And it's 6 2 in the seventh. Molina 
Perez second hit and second RBI of the game. trying to win his second ring. He's played in more World Series now than his brothers, trying to tie his brothers with two World Series rings. Strike one to Rafael Furcal. A single, a walk, and a single, and it's a four-run game in the seventh. Carl's had a nice night. Two hits. He was hit five pitches last time and almost got hit on the left leg that time. Schumacher on deck, the lefty, and Gonzalez still getting loose. said about Molina at first. Still just one out of the inning. Good pitch by Adams, strike two. Ranger bullpen that was so good in the division series and then certainly in the ALCS against Detroit has had a rough go in this World Series. Last night, tonight. Games two and three. The two two. Now for Colin a battle with Adams. was the big equalizer coming into this World Series. And the Cardinals figured him out. Here's a 2-2. Slow chopper. Young flips for out number two. And now with Schumacher coming up, we'll see if Gonzalez is coming in. Runners on at second and third, two out, bottom of the seventh, and that's going to be it for Mike Adams. He allows a run on two hits, a walk in two thirds of an inning. We'll give way to Michael Gonzalez. So as Gonzalez comes in, some of the images from this game seven. They're sensing it in St. Louis as they lead by four in the seventh. We are in the bottom of the seventh inning in a 6-2 St. Louis lead. Welcome inside our broadcast booth. I'm Joe. That's Tim. And this World Series, heck, this postseason has not disappointed. And this game is uh, 
It's an interesting one here in game seven. Yeah, it is, Joe. And I think that graphic we pointed out uh, in this last half inning about the 41 walks, a World Series record. And over the last two games in particular, the wildness of the relievers and the starters for Texas has bitten them. Skip Schumacher batting with second and third, two out against Gonzalez. Quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. Frees the runner at third. Molina, who has an RBI hit in this inning against Mike Adams, is at second. Schumacher trying to add to a four run lead. Takes it right down the middle. Gonzalez fooled him. The Cardinals get another run. As we go to the eighth inning of game seven. The Rangers are coming to the plate with a lot of work to do. Down by four. Lance Lynn is into the action. Fourth pitcher of the night. And he delivers a strike to Josh Hamilton, who's one for three. Does have two wins last night, as I mentioned, allowed three runs in an inning and two thirds. A ball and a strike. Michael Young will follow, then Adrian Beltre. Here comes a 1 1. Strike two. Anyone who followed last night's game, when Josh Hamilton hit that home run, the two run shot in the 10th inning, I bet 90% of baseball fans out there thought the game was over. I know I did. He's jammed and can barely get down the line. One out. I think everybody had the mindset that, well, the Cardinals have tied or had tied the Rangers in that ninth inning. But now the decisive blow, the Josh Hamilton two run home run, but the Cardinals said, uh uh, tied it again in the 10th and won it in the 11th. Think of where these Rangers are, where they were last night, two times. Yeah. With a two run lead in the ninth and the 10th. And in each inning, one strike away from their first world championship in franchise history. Agonizing. It took them five games last year. They could not get in front of the San Francisco Giants. A strike to Michael Young. And if they lose here tonight, Become the 12th team to lose back to back World Series. Last three since 61. The Yankees in the early 60s, 63, 64. The Dodgers at the end of the 70s, and the Braves at the beginning of the 90s. Go back to 1925 to find the last time a team in game seven came back by this much. To win the ball game. Here's a 2 1 and a pop up. Right side in foul ground. Albert Pujols squeezes out number two. And if you are just joining us, we are in game seven of a phenomenal World Series on the heels of one of the most unforgettable games any of us have ever seen last night in game six. Rangers got on the board tonight first trying to erase that memory from last night. But since the two in the first inning they have been shut out. And the Cardinals have scored six. Strike one to Adrian Beltre. You think about that rain out. Washing away game six. Strike two on Beltre. Clearly helping the Cardinals. Certainly now looking back with Carpenter getting a chance to make a start on short rest. He was very good. Relief good again tonight for St. Louis. 
into the bottom of the eighth. Jason Mott is getting ready for the ninth inning. It's a 6-2 game. Agondo is getting loose. Nick Punto will bat. For Lance Lynn. Ball one. The 1-0. Two and zero from Michael Gonzalez. Two and one. You think about how this season started for the Cardinals, losing Adam Wainwright, their number one starter, before he made a spring training start. Twenty game winner last year, won 19 the year before. As Punto flies into center, one out. The obituaries that were being written at the end of August with those numbers, ten and a half out on August 25th. They won the wild card on the final day of the season. They beat the Phillies. They beat the Brewers. And in the historic Game Six, came back twice from a two-run deficit, the ninth inning and beyond, in the ninth and tenth, and then won it in the eleventh. As Terrio takes a strike from Gonzalez. Oh, and two. Coming back from two run deficits in the same game. You may remember back 10 years ago, 2001, the great World Series between the Yankees and the Diamondbacks, when the Yankees came back from a two run deficit two games in a row, games four and five. Gonzalez has retired all threes, face two out in the eighth. The dramatic Tino Martinez home run to tie it, and then Scott Brocious the next night in game five to tie it, and the Yankees won both ball games. Here's Alan Craig. Meanwhile, the Cardinals are shooting for their 11th World Series title. That is number two in Major League Baseball to the Yankees, 27. 1 0 6 prior to that. Last time was 82 against Milwaukee. Strike one on Alan Craig. One ball, one strike. Gonzalez has come out of the bullpen throwing well. The Rangers in the ninth will have Cruz, Napoli, Murphy. Counts two and one on Craig. His homer tonight went up to, it looked like, take a home run away from Nelson Cruz. Good breaking ball for strike two. It looks like Gonzalez limping around a little bit after that previous pitch. They're looking at Gonzalez, who's wincing a bit as he waits to deliver a 2 2 pitch. He was picked up in August to add to this bullpen. And Gonzalez injured himself two pitches ago. You look at the ALCS and what this bullpen did is Ron Washington, Mike Maddox, a trainer, come out to look at Gonzalez. Here's the pitch that looked like kind of lost his balance afterward and then here's another look at it from behind home plate and he's been a little off since then that's going to be it so Alexio Gondo who was a big part of those numbers we showed you from the ALCS 
the work that the bullpen did against the Tigers it's been a different story in the World Series. And Uganda will take over with two out and a 3 2 count on Alan Craig when we come back. So this bottom of the eighth inning continues. And a little mist starts to fall here at Bush Stadium. Ogando with a 3 2 count, he inherits, and he gets the strikeout. That goes on his record, and that sends game seven into the ninth inning. The Cardinals three outs away from a World Series title here in 2011, up 6 2 on the Texas Rangers. Defensive changes for the Cardinals in the ninth inning up by four. Nick Punto takes over at second base. Descalso is in at third. John Jay is in the game in center. Skip Schumacher from center to right. Berkman out and Jason Mott. The man in the middle. Ball one inside to Nelson Cruz. Mott worked last night, went two innings and allowed two runs on the home run by Hamilton. Bruce robbed of a home run his last time up takes a ball outside it's 2 and 0. On deck is Napoli Murphy. Rangers need three guys to get on to have a chance. 2 and 1. Championship flags. Their last one in 06 over Detroit. The 2 1 popped up. John Jay. Two outs away. Our Audi player of the game, Chris Carpenter, on short rest. Had a rough start and then settled in. And he gave the Cardinals everything they could have hoped for. Five strikeouts into the seventh inning. Two runs on six hits. It's brought to you by the Audi A8. True greatness should never go unrecognized. One out in the ninth. Napoli, strike one. One for three tonight is Napoli. had a tough time manufacturing runs. Their running game was virtually stopped by Yadier Molina. Cardinals manufactured runs tonight and last night without getting the ball out of the infield. They lead 6-2 in game seven. Strike two. Two, two and two. If Chris Carpenter gets the win. She will if the Cardinals hang on. He will go four and oh this postseason. Left side for Discalso. Just into the game. Two out. Could have expected the Cardinals to be in this position even midway through September. Nobody. Ten and a half out on August 25th. Seven and a half out with 20 left. Three out with five games to go. That's of the wild card spot.
This team crashed the postseason party, and they're one out away. And now two strikes away. In the air to left, well hit. Back is Craig. What a team. What a ride. The Cardinals are world champs in 2011. Number 11 in 2011, and the Cardinals celebrate in the middle of Bush Stadium. Somewhere down in that mess is Ken Rosenthal. Ken. Thanks, Joe. Alan, what was going through your mind in the ninth inning, and what was going through your mind when the ball was in the air? I was just hoping Mike could finish it right there. When the ball was up, I was just like, just catch it. And it's over, and we got it. It was unbelievable. He did so many things in this series. The hits off a gun, the home runs, games three, six, and seven. What are you going to remember most? The whole thing, the whole experience, my teammates. Just an unbelievable group of guys. I mean, I wish everybody in the country could, could get to know these guys. It's unbelievable. I'm just glad to be a part of it. Tonight, Alan, the home run and the catch. Which did you like better? It's all good. I don't care. The home run was nice. The catch was better. I've never done that before. Okay, last thing. This guy right here, Jason Mott. What about him and what he did this year? Unbelievable. He was locked, locked down at the end of the games all season long. We have all the confidence in the world in him. He's an amazing talent. Unbelievable. Alan, congratulations. Thank you very much. A bunch of very happy Cardinal executives. Bill DeWitt Jr., the chairman, CEO. Bill DeWitt III, the team president, John Mozalak, the GM, Tony LaRusso as well. I know you guys are anxious to get your hands on the hardware, so I welcome in the commissioner of baseball, Bud Seeley. Thank you very much. This was a historic World Series between the American League champion Texas Rangers and the St. Louis Cardinals, who are now who are now the world champions of baseball for the 11th time in their glorious and great history. Tonight is the culmination of extraordinary run, winning the wild card in dramatic fashion, making last night's incredible comeback, and now adding to the Cardinals National League record with your 11th title. I congratulate the chairman and CEO Bill DeWitt Jr., Club President Bill DeWitt III, General Manager John Mozeliak, and Manager Tony La Russa. <laughs> Gentlemen, once your club has brought pride to the city of St. Louis and the legions of loyal Cardinal fans, 
I am honored to present the Commissioner's Trophy to the 2011 World Champion St. Louis Cardinal. Bill, what does an 11th title mean to this city, especially the way you guys came back over the last two months? This is one of, one of the great runs in, in baseball history, an incredible come-from-behind team, 10 and a half games out in August, and we just never gave up. And we had three great series in the postseason, and we were fortunate to come out on top in all of them, and I give all the credit in the world to our general manager here for making the deals to put us in this position, and our manager, Tony La Russa, who did a masterful managerial job one for the ages congratulations bill i know this is your third world championship <laughs> but considering the ride that you've taken since the end of august <laughs> is this way in some ways is this the most meaningful well it's the most unbelievable i mean our, this, this club the way they rose to the occasion backs against the wall for two months it's just it's unbelievable you know, come to that last night is it, do you worry at all that you come here to the ballpark worrying there'd be a little carryover? People would still be too high from last night? Well, the leaders, the coaches, we made it a point of saying that comeback has a way of carrying over and distracting us. We're not going to put it in a box someplace. We'll think about it tomorrow night. But right now, play the game because the, Mariner, the Rangers are very, very tough. And, and we did it. We played the game to win. Did Chris Carpenter do exactly what you thought he would do? No, he did more. I, you know, he's such a warrior to go six in. You know, he wanted to go farther. He, he did more than uh, than we thought he could. He's amazing. He's everything that, that a number one's supposed to be. You've had some great pitchers in your day, from Tom Seaver to Dave Stewart on down. Where does Chris Carpenter rank? Well, I, I put him right there with all the great ones. Uh, Dunk actually said that he's number one on his list of all time just because of the combination, but I'm more political, you know. I think they're all tied for first. There are a lot of great ones. Well, what about Alan Craig and the faith you had in, had in him this season? Well, you know, we've had so many young guys that have really come along and, and pitched and played like veterans, and, and Alan's one of them. But we've, up and down our roster, a lot of guys, a lot of bullpen guys, Descalzo. I mean, all these guys, they've played great. Tony, congratulations. John Jay. All right. Back to you. Chris Carpenter, along with his family, tears in your eyes. You won it in 06, the difference of doing it this year. Uh, you know, every every experience, every anytime you get an opportunity to do this, it's unbelievable. The experience, this is what you live for. No matter if you do it once or do it twice, uh, it's unbelievable. And, and the group of guys that we have in this clubhouse is so special. The things that we've, we, we accomplish, the things that we went through, um, this organization deserves it. Our club, our, 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 our team deserves it. Uh, it, it's just a great feeling. The first wild card team to win the World Series since the 04 Red Sox. What is it about this team that made you guys so resilient all season? Uh, we just continued to battle, continue to play hard, do everything we could. Uh, it was unbelievable, and uh, and we never stopped. We never we never gave up, and we did what we did. Game one, game five, game seven. Yeah, you went out there sense. on three days rest, yeah. 91 pitches, six innings. What was your mindset taking the mound today? Uh, I was just excited for the opportunity. And uh, I was able to go out there. It started a little rough. But after that, uh, it worked out. And we, uh, our guys came up big with some runs. And I was able to make some pitches in big key situations. Our bullpen was unbelievable. It worked out. It was awesome. And how proud are you of your dad? How proud? <laughs> yeah. Because, and who won the last World Series? I don't know. <laughs> you know you're on TV, right? No. Well, you better speed it up. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Right, nice. Guys, back to you. And we continue here along the first baseline with the MVP of the World Series, David Freeze. 21 RBIs in the postseason. That is a new postseason record. Do you have any idea, any idea what you did in the playoffs this year, man? I helped uh, I helped our team win. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, you hit behind, you know, our big guys. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure, but you got to get it done or else you're not going to be in this league very long. And um, it's fun having those guys around because I learned so much from, from, the, from them. Man, you've had a crazy road to the big leagues. Broken ankles, broken wrists, 
Still got the teeth in the grill, though. You're looking good, man. Sneaky hot, Harold. He's sneaky hot. hot. Single? Yes. My goodness. I'm this Come new on, security man. guard right now. But let's talk Let's talk about your journey <laughs> here, though, man. Uh, uh, during that time when you were injured and you are struggling to, to even get into baseball, what was your thought process, man, back then? It was, uh, you guys know, Mike? Yeah, it was something where, uh, you know, I, step, I, stepped, I stepped away and just kind of kind of regrouped, you know. I, I just I didn't want to play anymore. I was burnt out. You know, I grew up for 15 straight years just just playing ball, and you know for some reason that's just not what I wanted to do. So I went to Mizzou, had a good old time there, and um, and, and, and decided that uh, you know I need I need to play some baseball. And now and now you're circling the pillows. But the thing that's most impressive, I was talking about Alan Craig about this, foul pole to foul pole pop, curveball right center. Center field bomb, dead center. Fastball change. I mean, you're hitting everything. And, and as, a, as a young guy in the in the show, it's pretty impressive. Thank you. Um, you, know, you work off the tee. You do short toss. You take BP. You try and figure out the easiest way to hit the ball hard. Um, and if it goes, it goes. I um, mean, you, know, you got you got Nelson Cruz over there that can show you how to do that all day long. And um, you know, you just try and you try and put a good swing on it. And if you're a little late, you know, a little early. You know, hopefully it works out. You know what, David? We're, we're talking about this series and how you clubs pitcher out Albert. You moving up, Berkman Holiday being out, and, and, and you're pretty cool, man. I, I don't know you, and, and I know just the way you're you're just calm. Uh, you had some amazing at bats, and I, and I think even there we just showed the little rip of uh, of uh, Matt Harrison, tough pitcher. Yeah. Ended up getting you a, a three-one changeup. You got the three-two, and then you fought off that pitch. As Kevin's saying, right center approach. I mean, it really is. Are you that locked in? You talk about, oh, I just want to put an A swing in. That's pitcher. a picture right there. Is it that easy? Say yes, if you throw the cutter. You know it's not easy. You're but making it look easy. I mean, I'm a, look easy. I'm a guy that, you know, you try and keep it simple, and Big Mac has helped me so much. You know, everyone's got good swings in the big leagues, but you got to see the baseball. You know, that's, that's what starts your movement is seeing the baseball. And I'm a guy that I get that front foot down early enough, you know, I can use my strength and my, and my swing and, and hopefully do some good things. But... You know, you see the baseball, you know, that, that's what it's all about. Hey, we got a breakdown we did earlier today on you hitting the ball the opposite way. You're probably getting ready for the game, but we're going to show you some of the stuff we've been doing. I, I, I love this. Freeze for MVP. We had to pick ticketed already for the game. But look at this. Anything away, you're driving and being able to stay back and drive the ball. You talk a little bit about your approach on hitting balls away. I think with, with that, um, you know, you work on your swing, but... Uh, it's a, it's all about contact point. You got to figure out with with your swing where you can do the most damage. Um, and you know my approach is up the middle. Um, like you that. Know, and if if I pull the ball, I pull the ball. But uh, you just you got to get through the baseball, get some backspin, and and get after it. That's a fancy ball. pants oh, swinging right there. Oh. <laughs> That's his nickname, fancy pants. You know that, Harold? Oh, wow. Uncle Kevin. Oh wow. no. That's it's over. Up. 21 RBIs in one postseason. Uh, look at this third baseman to win a World Series MVP, or oh, Mike Lowell, on this back in 2007. So it lost. <laughs> it's really cool that you've done what you've done. You know what? We may never see again a guy get 21 RBIs in a postseason. And we may never see a World Series MVP who dropped a pop up. Oh, man. Oh. Again, so, I, I'm not going to lie. I had the front page paper all written out with that ball sitting on the top of my head. I'm like, can we tie this game up? Can we start all over? I mean, you right now are on the highest of all highs, right? That was the lowest of all lows, right? Well, I mean, I've had some lows in my life. Um, trust <laughs> me, <laughs> baseball field. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was able to come back. Well, yeah, you, 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 know. you go through adversity and you realize that it's just a game. Right. And I, and I keep people ask me about the crowd noise and everything, but you realize it's a game. It's the same game as when you were six, seven years old. It's just a lot harder. <laughs> hey, let me take you back six, seven years old. Growing up in this area, you grew up in St. Louis, played for the Cardinals, win a World Series, become MVP. Were you in the backyard talking like everybody else? <laughs> uh, Who were your heroes growing up? You know, I was, uh, yeah, I loved Ozzy. He was my guy growing up. Um, you know, I had his replica glove, did the whole deal. I wore 45 for Gibson when I was a pitcher for a few years. Love hearing stories about him. Um, the tradition here, the whole organization, it's all about winning. And, uh, you know, it's just there's something, there's something about playing for a team that has a chance to win every year. Tell you what, Ozzie and Gibson 
didn't have them baby blues, did they? <laughs> no. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, Don't look too deep Ooh, in them baby blues. Yeah. Go ahead. Thanks for joining us. Put the mic down. Put your hands in the air to these, lo these loyal MVP. fans. MVP! They're going MVP. nuts for you right now. The MVP of the World Series, David Freeze. There you go, man. There he is, holding up the MVP trophy.